Lee Edgar. I'm an engineer with the Department of Public Works of Queen Anne's County. And we are here this evening at a floodplain workshop that the county is hosting in partnership with FEMA. It's an opportunity to educate uh, and inform residents within Queen Anne's County about floodplain. There exists within Queen Anne's County over 400 miles of shoreline and over 30 acres of water. As such, there are several properties within Queen Anne's County that are subject to the effects of flooding, damage from hurricanes, tropical storms, or just heavy rain events. As a result, Queen Anne's County participates in the National Flood Insurance Program. It is a program managed by the federal government through FEMA, or the Federal Emergency Management Agency, which provides participating communities the opportunity and the resources to better protect their citizens and properties and provide flood insurance. So we're here today to look at some of the areas where FEMA is providing guidance. One of the first stations available to citizens this evening is that of property location and identification. And what this station provides are computers whereby staff from Public Works, Planning and Zoning, and FEMA can assist citizens by pulling up the various websites wherein the new flood insurance rate maps are digitized. With this, they have the opportunity to look at their property. They can see with satellite imagery where the 100-year floodplain line lies with respect to their home, their dwelling, garage, or any structure that they may have. One of the primary responsibilities of the National Flood Insurance Program is to, from time to time, conduct flood insurance studies from which they prepare flood insurance rate maps. So why we're here today, the uh, federal government is in the process of updating these maps, the last major update of which was in 1984. The flood insurance rate maps, or FIRM, these maps that we see right here, they identify areas within the county that are subject to the effects of flooding. As a result, we look at these maps to determine properties that are subject to the flood risks and look at the elevations to which a property should be elevated to better protect against those risks. One of the major elements of this floodplain map update is the creation of electronic maps. So while we have these paper maps, which anyone may view at the Department of Planning and Zoning or the Department of Public Works, they may also access the new maps, which are due to go into effect in November of 2014. They may view them online on their computers. At this evening's workshop, FEMA has brought several workstations where citizens may come, look at these websites, and actually see their property with aerial maps where they can see the boundaries of the 100-year floodplain. The National Flood Insurance Program, though a federal program managed by FEMA, is ultimately administered at the local community level. Queen Anne's County, in their part in administering and participating in the program, has adopted a floodplain ordinance. This ordinance guides the various zoning requirements as it relates to development within a floodplain. This ordinance was developed with a careful balance to allow for positive growth and development in areas but at the same time ensuring certain protection so as to minimize the loss or damage to personal property. Uh, with me here today is Dave Gignett of the Maryland Department of the Environment. They've worked with Queen Anne's County in developing the new floodplain ordinance that go with the, the maps which become effective in November. Dave, can you tell us what MDE's role has been in the adoption of the new ordinance and some of the things that the state and FEMA may be involved in when it comes down to appeals or if a citizen has concerns that the maps do not accurately represent the flood risks associated with their property. Okay. Uh, MDE is the liaison between the community and FEMA. We basically provide you with the oversight of how to get the ordinance adopted, some suggestions for higher standards, um, what that does for the community, what that does for local flood insurance requirements and things like that. On the appeal side, um, the information that the, that the map is prepared from is, is basically, in this case, we gathered the local uh, community's data, uh, the, the LIDAR data, the elevation data sets that were from the, from the county. So the maps were sort of off of a, a local effort. 
if someone believes that the information on the map is incorrect, then it falls back on the homeowner, property owner, local surveyor to give FEMA the elevation information, whether that's an elevation certificate to do a, a property survey, but to kind of trump it or overwhelm us with more information that maybe we picked up on the map. Uh, when you're looking at a map on a county scale, there could be subtle differences or variations that we could have missed on an individual property, and it really takes that information on a local property and even the outline from an elevation certificate of the ground right up against the house. So those two pieces of information are sort of how you appeal or trump the, elevation, the elevations that were used on the map. All right, so Dave, uh, a question that a lot of citizens have had for us is because as these new maps have become effective, some properties that weren't in the floodplain are coming in with the new maps. Right. Some are coming out. Right. So some folks are asking, you know, my property, I'm currently in the floodplain. These new revised maps have determined that my risk is lower and I'm no longer in the floodplain. Does that mean that I don't need flood insurance anymore? That's a great question. The, the, and the reason for that is you have to look at it from both perspectives. If the federal requirement to purchase flood insurance is based on where I am in the, in the floodplain and whether I have a federally backed mortgage, the requirement to have flood insurance is mortgage based to protect the federal investment dollar, so to speak. So the reverse of that does not necessarily fall off the planet. If you're just outside the floodplain, the only requirement is, is, to, is that you're now being removed from the federal purchase requirement of flood insurance. So if you think about it, was my risk on this edge of the line, you know, like stop as soon as I moved out of the floodplain? And people need to understand that the risk is there and that it's an actuarial line that sort of sets up that limit. So would you like, you know, like one tenth of that percent, you know, is enough to, for your risk? So it, the bottom line is you, you still have a risk. You're just not in that tipping point where the federal insurance requirement kicks in. So people should understand there is a risk if I'm close enough to the floodplain, and they should assess for themselves whether they feel that risk is something that they need to have flood insurance for. Well, that's a very good point. So if, if I own some property and the property exists within the floodplain, but if I don't have a mortgage, I'm not required right. to purchase insurance, but certainly it becomes a personal decision where I should weigh the risks and it may be to my benefit to purchase insurance to protect against damage. Exactly. And similarly, if my property is out of the floodplain, but I'm near it, right. I may want to also look at what insurance rates might be and make a personal decision exactly. on whether or not I should get flood insurance. Exactly. We're, 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 I've heard it many times where someone said, oh, thank you, I don't need insurance. All right. And, and I, then and, the big storm comes. And then, it's like, and then so the converse is true. As, as government, we, should, we, we want to convey the risk as the complete risk, not just, oh, where that line stops is, 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 is the boundary. They have to really think about the whole thing, the big picture. Well, Dave, while, while we have you here right now, it, some citizens have said, you know, that they had property that was damaged during Isabel, and then we had a storm later, and they experienced more damage. And so now they're concerned that there's been damage to the property on several occasions. Is there anything that, the, that they can look at or things that, that might mitigate properties that are at extreme risk to repeated loss? There are some, some state programs. Um, there are actually FEMA programs that the state administers. Um, it's, it's, it's not the Department of the Environment, it's MEMA. But there is a program, MEMA works at the local level with the counties on mitigating properties, um, elevating properties, buying out properties. There's a whole benefit cost, there's a whole ranking system. There's a, there's a process that there, there is funding available. It's tied to disaster assistance and did, have we had a disaster over the last two or three years that that funding envelope fills in. There's a couple things I think that it, it can start at the local level and we can feed that back to us at the state level. Again, it's not MD, it's, Mar it's Maryland Department Emergency Management Agency, MEMA, but that's, that's a good question. Well, thank you, and it's very fortunate because we've had a representative from MEMA here today. In addition to the preparation of flood insurance studies and creation of the flood insurance risk maps, FEMA's role in this process in the National Flood Insurance Program is that of providing affordable, federally backed insurance for properties that are located within a floodplain. And that is the whole purpose of the maps. So 
Queen Anne's County's participation in the National Flood Insurance Program affords its citizens opportunities to get insurance at lower rates because we participate in the program. One of the specialists that we had here today was speaking about insurance and answering questions as it relates to what different factors impact the rates of insurance on properties. For more information on any of these subjects, you may visit staff at the Office of Planning and Zoning or the Department of Public Works. Also, you may visit the county's website at www.qac.org and under quick links, there's a link to a floodplain page which has links to all the different federal, state, and local resources to answer any questions one might have with regard to floodplain, insurance, and maps. Thank you.